This video explains how to dispatch in the TMS system. The dispatch process involves selecting an order to dispatch. Then you select an asset to dispatch that, whether that's one of your trucks or an outside carrier. You can either dispatch the order immediately or plan it to occur sometime in the future. Then you set the empty start location. Once the empty start location is set, the system will show you distances, ETAs, tolls, and hours of service data. Verify that information. The next step is then to either offer the load to the driver and send instructions. Once the order has been dispatched, you can set the driver pay or outside carrier pay. This can include sending the rate confirmation and the driver instructions. Once that is done, the trip is dispatched and you can manage it via the dispatch grid. To dispatch, you can either click on the dispatch button inside the order or from the order number in the order grid, click dispatch order. This will take you to step two, which is to select the asset that's going to do the job. At the top of the screen will be a summary of the order that you're dispatching. Below that, you can either choose from your list of vehicles or your preferred carriers. If you choose from your vehicles, you can see the vehicle number, the last known location and how far that is away from the pickup, and the available truck location and how far that is away from the pickup, plus other particulars about the vehicle and the drivers and whether they have hours of service or not. The hours of service data is based on the ELD interface that we currently have with Big Road. If you choose an outside carrier, it will show the carrier name, their DOT number, address, and most important, how you rank the quality of that carrier. I can narrow the search down by typing into the search for vehicles or search for outside carrier. In this case, I'm searching for vehicles. As I type underscore and I, it finds a truck that starts with underscore I. I can see that this truck has 11 hours of time left in it today but its compliance is 341 days out of compliance. I double click on this truck and it brings the information about the truck and the driver up to the top of the screen. The same thing would happen if I chose a carrier. As I choose a carrier and double click, it's gonna bring the carrier name up there. Step three is whether I want to plan this order or dispatch it directly. Dispatching will open up a screen where I can select the deadhead, but plan gives me three different options. I can either plan it, which means I can plan and release, I can plan and hold, which may mean that I'm going to add more orders to the manifest, and I can plan an auto dispatch. Auto dispatch means if the truck already has a load on it, the next time it empties, it will look at all the planned auto dispatch loads and dispatch the next load that's due to go out. For this demonstration, we will click the dispatch button. This will open up a screen where we set the deadhead start location. This is the start of step four, set the empty start location. By default, when you dispatch your own truck, it will choose the last known location of the truck as the default start of the deadhead. If you dispatch an outside carrier, the deadhead start location will be the first stop. You can change the start location by choosing any one of the drop downs, which could be a customer location, any carrier, preferred carrier, one of your business unit locations, any city center or zip, a location, the driver's home, or you can manually enter the location. For this example, we're just going to stay with the last known location of the truck. Step five is to verify the ETA distances, tolls, and hours of service. In this example, the start location is in East Quillenbury, Ontario, with the first pickup in Aberdeen, Ohio. So the distance to the pickup is 556 miles as per PC mile or practical. It gives me a travel time and the tolls that I will experience on that deadhead move. Then the loaded distance and travel time and tolls for the loaded part of the trip. Total distance, total travel time, total tolls. There will be an ETA to the first pickup when the scheduled arrival is and tell me whether I'm going to be early or late. In this case, I will be 20 minutes early if I dispatch the truck right now. This is using an average speed of 47 miles per hour for the vehicle class assigned to this particular truck. And I need to go 46 miles an hour to make the pickup. Below that will be the hours of service data. It'll show first how many hours the driver has left in his day, how long it will take to run the load straight through. It will tell you how many minutes they will be offside. Step six is to offer the load to the driver and send them the load information. There's a checkbox that says, do you want to send the driver the load offer? This is strictly an email reminder to the driver that there's been a load dispatched to them. The dispatch instructions can be also emailed to the driver to tell them all the pickup and delivery information, plus any order notes that say share with driver. It is a good way to ensure that the driver has all the information in written format. If the driver has Circle Mobile, you can offer the load to the driver. This will put an offered button on the driver's Circle Mobile screen, and you can set how long the load will be offered before it times out. 
in the dispatch grid until the driver actually pushes the accept load button. This will show as offered on the dispatch grid. After 15 minutes, it will show timed out on the dispatch grid. The next step would be to click the dispatch and rate pay or to dispatch it and view the manifest. In my scenario, I'm going to actually dispatch it and set the rate. In this case, I'm going to give the driver 65% of the line haul and save that, which brings me back to the dispatch grid. From the dispatch grid, I can click on the gear and I can manually accept the offer if the driver has not accepted it and I know that he's on the load. I can send the driver dispatch instructions and I can email the driver's dispatch instructions as well. If this load was brokered to an outside carrier, I could also email the carrier rate confirmation from this gear function. The trip is now dispatched and I can manage this manifest and all the orders associated with that manifest on the dispatch grid. In summary, to dispatch an order in the Circle TMS, first select the order to dispatch, then select an asset, determine whether you're going to dispatch or plan it, set the empty start location, verify all the distances, ETA tolls, and hours of service, offer the load and send the instructions to the driver or the outside carrier, set the pay, send the rate confirmation or the driver instructions, and then manage it via the dispatch grid.